and welcome to the show guys. My name is Alex and this is TechFlow. Now I've done a few videos on my new place and surprised to figure out that I've been here now almost a year. Obviously I've installed a network. We've done loads of videos on installing that network but I wanted to do one network tour. Now other than it being completely ghetto there is some really cool things about it and a few of them are the fact that I've got two separate buildings here. The house is to the left the studio is to the right. I've got one internet connection and I'm sharing that connection between the two buildings. Another cool thing is that the whole thing is completely renewable in the fact that it's run off PV. It's run completely from the energy coming from the sun, which is really cool. Enough said, let's get straight into the tour. So first off, let's talk about how I'm powering my network. This is the Anchor Power Station Powerhouse, something or other 787. We've done a dedicated video on how this is all working. Basically, I've got two 300 watt solar panels that are sat there on the roof, sucking up the energy from the sun. This then has an inverter, which has some 240 volt sockets on it, which then basically power my whole network. Now, I said at the start of the video, this is ghetto. This is what I mean. My entire network is drilled to these two pieces of wood. Now, I feel like I have had my fair share of time in the past building out some pretty insane rack. But to be honest, to get things to work, some of the things aren't really necessary. This has been working now for, like I say, about six or seven months, literally flawlessly, and yet it's just drilled to some wood. This is the UDM Pro. It's my router. It has a hard drive in it, so it can also record all of my CCTV cameras. It's been really reliable, and the thing I like about it is that it has cloud services, so wherever you are with an internet connection, you can log on, basically monitor, check, and make sure that things are working. I've got two internet sources coming into this house. This is my cable box and I'm actually using Virgin Media here in the UK. They use a system called Doxis, which is basically internet over coax cables that run in the street. They go up to a gig. I have a 650 meg package down and 100 meg up. Now, one of the great things about the UDM Pro is that it can accept two internet connections. This is a Netgear Nighthawk. So this will basically kick in automatically if the main Virgin network goes down to make sure I've always got a connection out to the internet. And then from that UDM, we've got a 10 gig fiber link which plugs into this Ubiquiti Pro switch here. Now this is a really cool switch because all of the ports on it can provide power over ethernet and a lot of my devices on my network do require power and we'll get onto those a little bit later. And as you can see, I've got all these black cables which go off to different areas of the house. As well as that, on top of the switch, we've got this CyberPower UPS. This is just a backup power solution. So in case anything happens with the solar, this will keep things running for about 20 minutes to make sure that I can get to it and bring the power back to life, basically. And this storage is accessible on the network, whether I am in the house or over there in the studio. And as far as the ghetto network is concerned, it pretty much ends there. I'm only really calling it a ghetto network because I've got the main majority of my network gear basically drilled into a few pieces of wood. Now, let's go and see where all of these cables go. About half a year ago, when I transitioned this entire network to run over solar, I learned so much about what takes up a lot of power and what doesn't. And the problem with this networking stuff is that, let's face it, it's on 24 seven, it's on round the clock. So the less stuff you can have to make or draw power, the better for the environment and for your energy bill. Obviously this is an 18th century house, so getting Wi-Fi everywhere has been a bit of a struggle. And I want to share with you a couple of my tips. Let's start with how I got the internet from here over to the studio. Now, hopefully you can hear that beep. That is today's sponsor. Now my house is a really old house and when I bought it, it had a pre-installed alarm system that has sensors in all the rooms. I do arm it, but feel it's pretty pointless because it doesn't alert me on my phone if something gets triggered. 
Now, funnily enough, all of my gear is in the studio, which has no alarm until today. Simply Safe sent me the Windsor package, and it has this cool base station, which I've actually got in the kitchen of my house due to the nature of the system. More on that later. So that base station basically connects to your Wi-Fi, and then all of the other gizmos and gadgets for your security connect wirelessly to that base station. The keypad, as you can see, is here, and it's right next to the door where you enter the studio. There's also a whole load of other sensors and cameras that came in my delivery like this entry sensor up here it literally took me no less than half an hour to get the entire thing set up and have a full-on security system in here and I'm happy to report there are no monthly fees if you don't want them you can use the entire system locally without paying a penny per month to have things activated however there is paid plans if you want extra peace of mind and these include things like GSM and phone call alerts for numerous different people if the alarm gets triggered and they even have camera monitoring and a professional monitoring center that can request police or fire response to your location upon a visually verified incident. So thanks to Simply Safe for sponsoring the video, securing the office. I really, really like the system. I'll put all the links down there below. And now let's start the network tour of this studio up here. So the way I'm sharing the broadband from the house over to the studio is via 60 gigahertz. Now the reason I'm using 60 gigahertz is because the bandwidth is massive. I can get the entirety of my 700 meg from Virgin wirelessly over to the studio using this here micro tick receiver on the end of the pole. There's another one on the house, which obviously sends it out. It's connected into the main network switch. And then down this cable runs my local area network. So this wire comes inside here from outside from the micro tick receiver and plugs into this switch. Now this is another ubiquity switch. Again, this is an eight port here. All ports have PoE. Now the micro tick receiver on the outside gets its power from PoE. So it's just one ethernet run outside to the micro tick. It receives the data from the house and powers the device outside. Now you can notice we've got another few ethernet runs in here. These are going to a few of my CCTV cameras that I have in the garden. And it also goes into my first of only four access points that I have throughout the entirety of my property. And that gives Wi-Fi in the studio. So let's go and test it. So on the ceiling up there in the studio, we've got, yes, a Ubiquiti G4 dome camera next to an Alta 6 Pro. And they are really, really good due to the management software that comes with them. You get a lot of insights and it's all real time, which is really nice to see. On top of that, you've also got really good performance. Now, please bear in mind that this is coming over the 60 gigahertz link from the house into that switch down to this access point, and then we'll do a speed test on my phone to see what we get in here, because this will be the worst speed that we can possibly get. Just absolutely bonkers. So yeah, I'm super, super happy with the performance of the Wi-Fi access points and the 60 gigahertz link. It works flawlessly, and even absolutely great ping times. These are quite high because it's over coax. As you can see, if you look up there, we have another one of these units. Now, luckily enough, the Pro units are waterproof, so you can have them outside. And this basically provides Wi-Fi coverage for my entire garden. There is one more ethernet run, which runs out there somewhere. Now that external ethernet cable runs into the shed. Now my main hack with this being an 18th century house is what I've done is I've basically ran all the cables outside. To get cables through the house would have been an absolute nightmare. So I just bought loads of Cat 6A external rated cable and everything basically runs outside and then back in. But why are we in the shed? So that cable from the house comes into this coil here and goes into this little baby ubiquity switch. Now this is only a small little five port switch but it's really cool because it has this special feature it's not only powered via poe so this switch is getting its power from the main switch in the ghetto rack but it also has poe out on its other ports so you can do things like power wireless access points or cameras like i have here so this one cable runs from the main rack and then i have two cctv cameras again facing in my garden and you may be thinking alex why have you got so many any cameras in the garden. Honestly, it's only so I can keep an eye on my dog. This is my downstairs access point and it's right in the corridor 
and it basically covers the entire downstairs portion of my house in 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi, which is fine. Now, if you're trying to design a Wi-Fi network, do not rely on 2.4 gigahertz because, and I'll put money at now, it will let you down. If you've got 5 gigahertz coverage everywhere, that is the way to go. And for your phones and devices and TVs and laptops, they need to be using 5 gigahertz or you will be having a bad time. Now, the last of the four access points is in the middle of my house. This part of the house is actually three stories and we're on the middle story here, which is why I've placed this access point here. It does this floor, it does the floor above, and it does the floor below absolutely fine. Now, this is how important Wi-Fi AP placement is because it makes a massive, massive difference. It was so difficult for me to place this access point here. I had to drill through this wall with a drill bit which was about that long. And the cable comes out here, goes into this trunking, up here, over here, and then somehow goes over this rack, and then it goes outside, and then that means it's super easy to get the cable back to the main server rack. So just to show you guys, I've come down onto the first floor, we're connected up to the access point you've just seen, and again, we are pulling the entire 700 meg of my internet connection. These Alter APs are seriously amazing. And now we are up on the third floor of the house, and again, it's a three-story house, and I've got one access point covering this entire place. Now this, again, keeping with our ghetto theme of this install, I've got another little ubiquity switch, and this basically runs off to my gaming setup, so I've got a hardwired connection over there. The main question I'm gonna get is, Alex, why have you not deployed 10 gig networking around your house? Ethernet now over Cat6 or Cat6e can do 10 gig. The main problem with it is that 10 gig switches are super expensive, and so far I haven't really seen the need for it, but that's not me saying that it's not gonna come in the future. If I have a problem with my network, it's basically just drilled to two pieces of wood so I can get all around it, change, swap out cables quite easily anyway, which is super nice, but I will be doing these things soon, but they're just not needed yet. When I did move in, I had five or six, or I think even seven access points throughout the whole thing. And I've now ended up with four. How did I do that? Now these things are really cool because you can basically put them on the floor and suspend your access points in different places around your house. Just squish it between the C-stand and the roof. And then you can go around your house and do numerous tests to see where is gonna be best to place your access points. It took me about half a morning of troubleshooting back and forth, changing a AP placement until I found the perfect places to provide the best coverage with the minimal amount of access points. And having a minimal amount of access points reduces RF interference and also reduces that pesky power bill, which is really important for me because I'm trying to run everything off solar. But so far guys, everything has been working really well and it's been working well for months. I'm not gonna change it for a while, but when I do, I will be doing 10 gig and hopefully Hopefully things won't be as ghetto. But to be honest, I've really been enjoying this ghetto networking lifestyle. Anyway, guys, my name's been Alex. I hope you've enjoyed. We'll see you in the next one. Peace.